Foothill reflections are very easy to do, generally in a lot of different landscapes which employ foothills. Just doing a reflection is very simply a matter of taking, I'm using a one inch brush, pressing. See how I just lifted my hand up to press that? And I pull it straight down. And we're just reflecting this into the lake that's right there, just pulling it straight down. I know, you probably thought I was going to turn the canvas upside down and paint exact replicas of what it was about. But once I get that done, then I'll just go ahead and go right across. Now, I want to direct your attention. There's a mountain right above here. So how do we put those mountains in? Well, I'll just take my knife and I'll grab some of the original color, which was that mixture that we call mountain mix, and I'll just say, okay, I have the peak and it's coming down around there. Then I have this other peak and that's about right there. And this other peak, that's about right there. So I know this is going to go down and come up. So just about like that. And then this will come down. This is going to go down. And this is going to go down. And this will come up like this and then go down. That's all you have to know. That's the hardest part of the whole thing. So now all we've got to do is just put in a little bit of color right here. Okay, we're not even being fancy about this. We repeat the exact same uh, technique that we did when we made the mountains to begin with, where we put the, the mountain color on. First, we're worried about the edge. Now, look what we're worrying about. You're not going to see everything because this mountain is way back, but we will see some parts of it. Because then we have the foothills, which are disappearing into that. So this is just a small amount that we're going to see that's being reflected into the water. So I scrape off the excess uh, mountain mix. Then I take a small brush. I'm just going to use the one inch right here. And I want you to see what I'm doing. So I'm going right underneath the edge. Just follow it down. Follow this down. Follow this down. Follow this down. And with that, we have all of this ready to go to the next step, which is to put a little bit of snow on it. Now, you have a choice. You can flip the canvas upside down and just uh, highlight it like we just did. Or you can go ahead and try it from here. See, we went like this, so let's just continue to go just like that. Small amount of paint, you don't need as much, since this is on the reflective side, as you did when you did this originally. And it doesn't necessarily have to be all that accurate, because when we start to brush it, there will be some distortion, even though it will not be a lot. Now, I did not put this right here on the edge. There it is comes right out to the edge. So I'm hoping you can see everything here. Add a little bit more here to the right peak. Now let's go over to the left peak. And that's all on this side. Again, just letting the canvas take what it wants as you go ahead and glide over it with this white paint. Now, we're going to go ahead and just take some of that shadow color. And if you remember, when you originally did that, that was a mixture of blue and white. Of course, as you practice at home uh, with this technique video, you can use any color you'd like. So we'll just go ahead here. And we'll go ahead here. And many times I've been 
up in the high Sierra Mountains hiking. Or when I was a young person, uh, my father was military, and we would spend some time up in the Alps and uh, over in Bavaria, Switzerland, and a number of places. And uh, we would hike through some of those really huge mountains. And uh, you'd be up there in the mountains or down just below where you're going to start to make that mountain trail. And you'd sit there and you'd see in the lakes a reflection of the mountains. And they would be so beautiful. Now with that done, I'm going to take a nice clean two inch brush. And I'm only using about six or seven hairs, okay, you know. You don't want to use a lot of pressure and drag the whole thing. Just come right up here, drag it down a little bit, drag it down a little bit, drag it down a little bit. Just repeat that as you go over it. Come over here just as well. And now just make sure you remove the excess paint from your brush. I use a little bead of wrap. And now I'm going to go horizontal. Of course, no reflection is good unless you have the water line to separate the land. And so we'll just add a little water line here just so you can not only see water line, but see how that breaks up everything for you. For water lines, I use a small amount of liquid white and some color. I think I'll use just a, a touch of that yellow ochre since we have it in the sky already. Just go ahead and put some of this down, spread it out, mix it up nice and thin. I know I'm not showing you the palette here, but I think that you need to concentrate totally not on how to mix colors, but just on how to apply that. But if you, the viewers, all send me little nasty grams that say, hey, we want to see the color palette, not only will you make my producer happy, but you'll make me reshoot a lot of this. Start to put the uh, water line in. Now, notice how small of a roll of paint. I just basically put it down onto a spread out uh, mixture of paint and just give it a slight little pull. And that loads every small amount. Notice my fingers on the blade and see the angle. I come in almost straight in. And my strokes are totally horizontal with that of the bottom of the canvas. And that's because water seeks its own level, so I need to make sure this is as level as I can get it. So we have this beautiful reflection going on here with the uh, foothills and the mountains. And it's just that simple to put in reflections in any of your water scenes.